Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Janine Barrow, and thanks for joining me today. I am celebrating today the first of two graduation ceremonies for my September cohort at the Fearless Leadership Mastermind. So I want to celebrate that with you. I'm so excited. We've had a beautiful journey together, ups, downs, crunchiness, excitement, aha moments, breakthroughs. It's been such a pleasure to hear from our members and to hear what they're experiencing as they go through our six-month training. There's a component with online training, and then we meet every two weeks in a live Zoom mastermind circle. And it's during those mastermind circles that we go deep into what is going on with them, how the training is going, and we do the work. So today I'm celebrating that the first half of the cohort is graduating today and next week we'll be graduating the rest. So I'm super excited for them and what this next segment of our training will bring them where we be, will begin to meet once a month to do our monthly check-ins. So today I want to give you a little bit of training on what happens when you are doing something that you've committed to and you begin to see yourself fall into old patterns where this new thing you're doing is out of your comfort zone. And when you begin to see yourself experiencing the same behaviors that you were used to, what happens? How do you handle those situations? Do you stay the course and trust the process? Or do you tend to look for excuses as to why you're behaving that way and begin to pull back and go into your set point of, I'm just going to do what I'm used to. I know this could be very triggering for some of you. I know that uh, as a person who has found herself going through trying something new and then recoiling because there was something that just wasn't quite aligned with me. In other words, the new thing is something that I wasn't used to and I, for some reason, have resistance to it. And sometimes the resistance is very obvious. Other times is very sneaky because we just begin to rationalize. Oh, I can eat this. Oh, I can have that. Oh, maybe if I do this, it wouldn't be so bad. Um, I'll do the training tomorrow. Oh, I'll do the training next week. And before you know it, you find yourself falling behind. So this is related to your personal development. It's related to those goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year. And you may be realizing, wow, it's only a few weeks into the new year. And I find myself already going back to my old ways. And whatever it was that I committed to, it's falling by the wayside. So if this is you, this is your wake up call, because I am here as your coach today, as I also go through these situations, I'm here to encourage and support you if that's what you're experiencing. So let's think about something that you committed to this year. Just think about that for a second. Keep that in mind. And then begin to think about what is it that I'm currently doing as it relates to what I committed to doing. And you may find that you are on track. And if that's you, awesome. You are committed. You are following up with actions that reflect your commitment. And that means that ultimately you're going to go down the constructive and positive path that will lead you to that outcome. If you are somebody who started out all gung-ho, like so many of us do, and now when you ask yourself the question, how am I doing as it relates to my commitment, you may find out that, oh, I'm only doing it sometimes. I'm only practicing that thing whenever I remember. And the rest of the time, I am back in my old ways. This is not uncommon, by the way. You are not alone. We are human after all. And as humans, we tend to gravitate towards what we're comfortable with. So if you are trying something new, kudos to you, because that means you have a growth mindset and you've decided that whatever you committed to is going to support you in your life and in your career. And 
if you're here where you find yourself kind of, I'm going to use the word on purpose, half-assing it, then it's time for you to recommit. So let's use this training as a time to recommit to what is your goal. And the way we recommit is not by saying, I'm going to plow through it and push through it. That's only going to take you so far. The way that we recommit is by focusing on what is my why? Why is this important to me? And remember, I don't ask why questions. One of the few empowering questions that you can ask with why is, why is this important to me? Otherwise, you hear me asking what or how questions. Those are empowering. So let's get clear on what is the purpose behind your commitment? What was it that you were looking to go after or achieve or feel by committing to what you committed? So in my example, I've committed to being in the best shape of my life from now forward. That's a huge commitment when you think about it, because it is a lifestyle reboot. It's a lifestyle change altogether. And so this is not just a, I am doing this for a week or two weeks or 30 days. I began with a 30 day challenge with my coach, Jason Finney. But now that I'm at the end of almost week four, I need to recommit to what am I going to do going forward if my goal is to be in the best shape of my life moving forward. So that to me, recommitting to that means what am I willing to do because I want to feel energized. I want to feel good in my own skin. I want to have energy. I want to have strength. And I want to be mobile. I want to be able to do the things I enjoy, such as traveling, spending time with my family, doing activities with my son, who's 15, for as long as I can. And I want to enjoy my life with a partner. And I can't do those things if I am not in my best health. And so if I have the power to gift myself the best body, the best vehicle, the best vessel that I can give myself, I'm going to take advantage of that power. And all of us, for the most part, have that power. So what is it you can do that you can control about yourself that will help you go after what you committed to? Because it has meaning to you to recommit. The number one component is to find and clarify again, what is the purpose? What is the why, the meaning, why that was important to you to begin with? And that's how we recommit. Then the next step is much easier, which is, okay, if I understand my why, if I feel my why and why this is meaningful to me, what do I need to start doing again that maybe I stopped doing in my, you know, wishy-washy manner before? And I say that with love, right? What is it that I need to do next? So for me, in this example, it would be to make sure that I continue to have my meals, that I continue to do my 30-minute speed walk to burn fat, that I continue to meet with my coach to do my three training sessions and also do my stretch session and my mindset session. So five days of my commitment to my future to my vision of living in the that I can possibly live in. So that is how we recommit. Make sure that you recommit to your goal and that you identify what is the why behind it. And then if you are someone, this is case number three. So case number one is you're on track, you're aligned. Awesome. Case number two is that you find yourself dabbling I do it. I don't do it. Sometimes I remember. Sometimes I forget. Uh, the other component that's really important to recommit is to make sure you create the right structure that will support your recommitment. What does that mean for me? It's I have on my calendar have snacks because my snacks were not part of my meals before. So if I don't have it on my calendar to have my snack in the morning around 10 and in the afternoon around 2.30 to 3, then that means that I'm going to forget my snacks. And so if you are recommitting, what can you do 
to ensure that you create a successful structure that will help you in your recommitment to your goal this year. All right. So that's part two of case number two. Case number three is when you have fallen off the wagon completely. You had a goal this year. You had a commitment at the beginning of the year. And by now you realize it is gone. For example, the easiest one is you committed to moving, to go into the gym. And it's only a few weeks into the year and it's gone. Now, what do you notice happens with you if that's the case? What do you notice happens do you start to rationalize? Oh, this is why I can't go to the gym. I am busy. I have work. I have family responsibilities. I have other priorities. It's selfish for me to take time to go to the gym. What do you typically do? Because as humans, it's very hard for us to live with cognitive dissonance, which means that what we say and what we do are different things. It's very hard for us to live with that crunchiness inside. So we as humans tend to want to be aligned with what we're thinking. And so what happens and the way that our brains helps us to trick ourselves is that we begin to tell ourselves a story so that we can justify the behavior that we're not following through on what we committed to do. Does that make sense? So automatically, if you are in that category where you have fallen off the wagon and completely forgot your commitment and your goal, that you will have stories you started to create, narratives in your head or even out loud where you're telling yourself, most importantly, that you cannot do the thing. And you come up with a laundry list of, of reasons why you can't do the thing. And so I want to invite you, if that's the case, to really get honest with yourself, because it's true. If I had committed to doing this challenge, this new lifestyle of health and fitness for myself, and I my son got ill, my mother became ill, a family member, a dear person in my life became ill where I needed to take care of them, I can tell you that it would be very challenging for me to do what I'm doing right now when I have Thank goodness, for the most part, everything is okay. If I had to change jobs, if I had to uh, adopt a new team, if I had to do things at work that would really rock the boat, it would be extremely challenging to start a brand new lifestyle management routine where I knew that I just needed more time to adjust to the new situation. So if that's the case, give yourself grace and know that you haven't turned down your goal. You haven't said no to it. But what you're doing is you're putting it on hold briefly because of the situation. That's acceptable. That's real. That's factual. So let's put the stories on the table and let's really look at each one with honesty and say which is real and which is fictitious. And what you will uncover is that you may have legitimate reasons why you stopped following your goal, why you fell off the wagon. Those could be real situation scenarios. And you will also discover that some of them are stories. Some of them are simply myths that you're telling yourself about why you can't do it. And you know in your heart that if you were truly committed you will begin to set boundaries around your time so that you can carve out whatever time you need to take care of that goal, to continue to take steps toward progress. And so all we're doing in this training is being honest with yourself and getting into the truth of what is holding me back from achieving and going after the goal and how I wanted to feel and be because of my goal. And then once you discover the, the answer to that, that you decide, am I going to recommit? And if you can recommit because you discovered you were telling yourself stories that were fictitious, then follow what I said before, 
which is make sure that you get clear on what is your why, the meaning, why is this important to me? And then secondly, create a structure that will support you to take the next step. And along the way, you may figure out that you need support, that you can't do this by yourself. You could, but that it would be so much more joy enjoyable and pleasurable if you were to do it with someone else. And if that's the case, seek the support that you need. Who can support you along the way? Is it a friend? Is it a family member that is knowledgeable in this area that you are striving into? Or is it a coach that can have an objective perspective and support you by encouraging you, empowering you, by helping you see your blind spots, which is mostly the reason why I have a coach, because sometimes I get in my own head and I only see one track. And my coach helps me expand my perspective, helps me see things from a different angle that supports me in achieving my goal, my agenda, okay? And so look for the people who can support you. And if you are clear on what it is you're looking to do and gain and achieve and feel in this year, and you are clear on the why, the meaning behind it, and you set up that structure that supports you and seek out the resources that you need, what do you think is the likelihood that you're not going to make progress? It's very, very very, very small, 0 0.0001, right? So let's do it. It's not too late. It's never too late. Failure only happens when we give up. And I know there are times when we need to give up for the right reasons. And that is a decision that you make based on logic and heart. However, failure is truly failure when you give up and you didn't give yourself the respect to ask yourself, what is it that caused me to give this thing up? And if your answer is not legit, that's the real failure. But trying, going for something, understanding that it didn't work that way and I'm going to tweak it and trying something different, that, my friends, is living with a growth mindset and life is nothing but a series of what I call tests. And every single one of those tests is going to help you get deeper into who you truly are. Who are you? What is your character? And so notice, what is your character? Are you someone who is aspiring to become a better version of yourself? And when you hit a roadblock, you look for ways around and how can I continue to make progress? Who can support me in this journey? Are you that kind of person? Or are you the person who perhaps your ego may get in the way and when you are making progress and you run into an obstacle, you automatically shut down and turn the other way and run because you don't want to face that obstacle. When we do that, and I say this with love, we forego the opportunity to grow into the next version of who we are capable of being. So I encourage you that if you're running into roadblocks, that instead of turning around and saying, that's it, I tried too bad, whether it's in your career, in your personal life, in your romantic relationships, in your finances, that instead of recoiling and running, that you stop, give yourself some grace some forgiveness, and then reassess what can I do to move forward in a way that feels aligned with who I am today and who I am looking to become from a place of love, from a place of abundance, not from a place of scarcity and fear. Fear and love and faith cannot coexist. If there is fear, there is no faith. If there is fear, there is no love. And so if you notice yourself in fear, ask yourself, how can I bring more faith into this situation? Because that faith and the love for yourself is going to help you find solutions and reach out to people 
who can help you find those solutions. So if you need any support, I am here to support you. You can always find me at callwithginny.com. I hope this training has helped you get clarity around where am I with my goals that I set out for myself at the beginning of the year? Am I on track? Am I kind of dabbling? Or am I really going for it? And we, wherever you find yourself on that spectrum, give yourself grace because this too shall pass. Meaning if you're crushing it, go for it. There will be something else that at one point you are not. So that too shall pass. If you're not crushing it, if you're struggling, this too shall pass. Nothing, nothing, nothing is permanent. We are constantly changing just like the seasons because we're part of nature. And so um, let's embrace that change. Let's be agile leaders, agile parents, agile friends, agile lovers. And you will see how your life will get lighter because we're not expecting things to stay fixed. Nothing stays fixed. We are change, constant change. And so let's embrace it. It's always a pleasure to connect with you. Live with purpose. Live with joy.